Hello plant people, how are you guys doing today? If you're new around here, my name's Ashley and I'm a soil scientist with a plant science minor and on this channel, I like to take that science and apply it to all things plants. And in today's video, we're talking about the snake plant. And in particular, um, this guide is going to get me a lot of flack because I'm going against the, the grain on all my tips and tricks. I've had these guys for a very long time and the ones I'm going to show you today are actually ones that I recently have purchased, except for this guy. He's very old. He's been divided a million times now at this point, but how to actually get rapid growth off these guys using science. So this monster I've had for many, many years, uh, but typically I will purchase my snake plants on sale because they are always on sale because they're typically confused as very slow growers because they're confused as slow growers people usually don't want them if they're damaged in any capacity because they think well this is going to take me years to get a plant that looks good so this one for example i got 50 percent off and he was he did not look good when i got him so all this dark green kind of busted looking stuff is what i bought him with and not even three months later i've got a ton of new growth on this guy so it is possible to achieve this look in a very short period of time just following some basic rules now if you're gonna ask me the names of these i don't know what the name what types of uh snake plants these are so this guy milkado milkado so yeah 40 percent off he was busted up all these broken parts uh all this actually all this stuff right here is all new growth in in the last few months this guy i got with a single sail fin that's looking real ratchet and now i got this new sail fin very happy very healthy i actually have always wanted a sail fin they're so expensive so i got this guy on sale because he looked like absolute junk uh and and i already have another one growing this guy's super cute he's samurai samurai super adorable he was really tiny when i got him and this is my newest leaf on him and then i don't know what this guy is super pretty though i like him very very happy and then this guy is one of many so i have one actually at work he looks a lot better than this one uh this guy's been slightly abused but looks like a giant starfish type thing very pretty very cool Okay, so enough with the Sansevieria snake plant tour. Let's just jump in exact, into exactly how to get rapid growth out of these plants. So in order to understand how to best grow a plant, we need to understand its native conditions. So the snake plant actually is from regions of Africa, Madagascar, and Southern Asia that are considered arid. And they are found everywhere from the bald headed prairies all the way to places underneath canopies of trees. But the important takeaway of these plants is that they are considered obligate cams. So what is a cam plant? Well, a cam plant refers to crossulacean acid metabolism. All this means is that it has the ability to store carbon. This is very important because it has a carbon fixation pathway that means it's actually able to keep its stomata closed during the day when the stomata is closed during the day we actually have lower rates of evapotranspiration meaning it's able to withstand drought which is why people will typically say i water my snake plant once a year once every six months once every three months we're going to get into that a little bit later but that's how these plants are able to survive those environments. What happens is in a cam plant, the, the stomata will only open during the evening once the sun has gone down. Once the stomata open, it will allow for carbon dioxide to be taken up into the plant. What cam plants do is they then take that carbon dioxide and turn it into malic acid. That malic acid is essentially just a disassembly of the carbon, which is then stored in the vacuoles. We talked about vacuoles before in regards to turgor pressure and how they regulate the firmness of the plant. Same place, this is where this acid is stored. 
during the daytime, what ends up happening is that malic acid is then reconverted back into carbon dioxide, which is then used for photosynthesis. The key to this entire process is that it is very energy inefficient, but needs to happen in order for the plant to survive very hot environments with not a lot of moisture. However, there are CAM plants that have no choice and must utilize CAM regardless in order to photosynthesize. It's just how they work. In a lot of cases though, plants are obligate CAMs, meaning they're able to do photosynthesis normally, like a regular plant would, if the environment and the conditions around it are correct. That means if you want photosynthesis and energy production to be efficient and quick and result in more vegetation, you need to give it the optimal environment and you need to give it the option to not be a cam plant because it is obligate. It is only based on its environment around you, around the plant. So what I do with my snake plants to achieve some crazy growth is I completely turn off the cam mechanism in my snake plants. The way I do this is I put them in a ton of sun, <laughs> full sun, indirect bright sun, under grow lights, you name it, and I water them very, very regularly. So depending on the plant uh, and where I want it, will determine where it goes. In a lot of cases, they will be an outdoor plant. So in the summertime when it's warm enough and obviously we don't have frost, all these are in full sun on my deck. I get crazy rapid growth when I do this. The other thing I do, um, especially if I just purchased a damaged one or one that was on sale, I will actually put it under a grow light, especially if I want to get some rapid growth. So again, that is number one key is a ton of light. I know they are low light tolerant. And if you don't want new growth and you just want a plant in a low light area, these plants do fine. They do great in that situation. The other thing I like to do is water regularly. So if the soil dries out, I'm going to water the plant. I'm not going to leave it for months on end. I'm sorry, it's just not the case. Now, depending on how much light you're giving the plant and the ambient temperature, room temperature with sufficient amount of light, if it's actively growing, you may need to water once a week. If it's not actively growing and you've been keeping it in a dark room or a darker space, you haven't watered it in a while, it may only be once a month to start off with. It completely depends. It also depends on the size of your pot and a whole bunch of other different factors. But I have one in my office, which is kind of a starfish looking one. Um, I'll insert a photo if I can remember to take a photo while I'm editing this. When I go back to work, I'll take a photo of what this plant looks like. He's getting huge and I haven't really even had him that long. It is because he gets watered once a week minimum. That's how quickly he's drying out and he's in full sun. So, like I said, this is gonna go against the gray, and I know a lot of people don't like watering them, they like keeping them in um, low sun areas. If you want rapid growth and you want a big plant fast, that's the best way to achieve it. The one thing I will say is when, if or when you do decide to transition them outdoors, you wanna be careful about sun, you wanna harden them off just like you would any other plant. This, the big guy, I have sunburned in the past, so. That's just, it's just the way it is. Um, they are sensitive to light, especially if they've been in a dark area for extended periods of time. Some common things you may have with your snake plant is a floppy plant or almost like a veining or a ribbing in the plant. If this happens, that means that you're under watering and you need to water more. So this guy's got um, this big one. Let me just grab him here. He's like literally four feet tall, but you can see He's got kind of like this rib on him. And then he also has kind of like a floppy leaf. So this guy 
I didn't water. And so he ended up with the floppy leaf and more of the ribbed look on some of this. If you end up with the floppy leaf or the ribbed look, there's no fix to this. It's kind of the way that leaf has formed and that's just life. You're gonna have to deal with it. There's no fix to that. The fix actually would just be cutting the leaf off in its entirety. Fun fact about these plants is that they've actually recently been reclassified as a Dracaena, Dracaena, however you want to say it, and it was completely based on the family tree or the DNA of the plant. So Sansevieria technically does not exist anymore. It is in the same family as the Dracaena completely based on molecular phylogenetics. So the family tree and the DNA of the plant, not on visual look, not on where they reside in the world, nothing like that, just completely based on DNA. I hope you guys found this helpful. I know it was controversial, so I'm probably gonna get a whole bunch of thumbs down, but I'm totally cool with that. Let me know in the comments if you enjoy Sons of Area, how many exactly you have in your collection, and I will talk to you guys next time. Bye.